<laughs> Perfect. Everything you say, Howard. Now, did, I, did I hear Howard on the line? I am. Hi, Howard. This is Cheryl. Listen, after the meeting, I will forward you the resolutions for your signature. Do you guys see the <laughs> agenda? Yes, I can see the agenda. Okay. Um, I'm still logging in. I, I have one question. Is the recording going to be the minutes? What's no. in the rec Okay, thanks. No, I mean, I'm hoping that I've sent an email to the person that usually takes the minutes to confirm that she will be here, but I haven't heard back. Okay. <laughs> well, I've Where's she can... Worst comes to worst, we do have the we will have the recording. But um, the other thing, Howard. Yes. Uh, two things. We when we start the meeting, uh -huh. um, we need to do the roll call so we know who's on the line. I mean, uh, I will I have that. It. Okay. The um, the other thing is since we're recording. It, I think we should announce that we are recording just so pe I think you have to tell people if they're being recorded. So it, I'll do that. And it does tell them when you log into the uh, call, it, it very first thing says this is session is being recording. That's why I asked. Oh, oh, okay. Um, but I will, oh, uh, so but I will, I will remind it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Can never be too careful. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, let me look at how this looks on screen. Um, good. Um, I'm trying to find. Hello, you. Cheryl. I don't have a camera on. <laughs> I, Irene. Yeah. They will be, remember, we talked about the place where they will be able to, uh, you said stack, you know, put a question. Is that oh. still a feature that's going to be enabled here? Yeah, it so is. From, it's automatically enabled. So what people should do, think, we, we could explain it. Um, I think I'm going to give you the time to do that at the very beginning. Let's not interrupt the, you know, flow right. of the meeting. So, so I'll, I'll make like a presentation. To, few reminders which is if you're not speaking put yourself on mute i've got that okay i'm, I'm already getting this down from our first meeting the things to tell them but the okay. part about yeah the part about the new feature that we have for basically asking to talk or whatever is so it's basically something. you just you you click on what's um the little icon that looks like a comic show uh, show conversation? Yeah, you put show conversation. I see. Okay. So, like, I could write. Um, I see it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good morning. <laughs> Hi. Good morning. This is Teresa. Hello. Good morning. How are you all doing? Uh, a question before we get started. I noticed that there was something in the notes that said we could link by video. But I can't yeah. see any place to do that. So in the email, in the, at the bottom of it, it said something like join by Microsoft meeting teams. And so it was in purple. And if you click on that, it should bring you into the meeting. Is okay. that correct? Uh, I'm, not I'm not finding th that email. I have the email from you with all the agenda items, but I, and, um, and Go to I'm your calendar. Here, here's another idea. It's Go not to in the calendar. I looked yes, in the it calendar. Is. I didn't see. Okay. Here, I'll put it. I got it. Wait, I know what I'll do. Let me put it in the chat. Oh, you're not in there. So at the bottom of the agenda, it says my name, Irene. And then it said, I highlighted it in green. It said, join Microsoft Teams meeting. And if you click on that, that should take you right into the meeting. Okay, you know what? It didn't. It is not coming up for me on my calendar. I'm not. I noticed that you said no. No, just screen. look at the email I sent you. Just no, but I'm telling you, I don't. I don't have an email. The only email I have has the agenda material. 
Right, at the bottom of that email, scroll down, it says, let me know if you have any questions regarding the use of Teams. And then it says, Irene. Oh. Here, I'll just, re I'll send it to you. Then it says, yeah, join. that's not showing up on my email. The only thing that's showing up on my email are the documents. But let me, let me get on the computer. I was looking on the phone. Well, here, I'll, I'll, and I'll just send it to you again, too, so. Uh, uh, and this is Pam. I'm on. Hi, Pam. Hey, Pam. It's Howard. Hi, Howard. Hey. Pam, are you or Will going to be taking the uh, actions on the incentives? Who um, are you going to throw it to? Um, it doesn't matter. I did oh, it in the committee. Okay. Irene, it shows up on when I open up my computer as opposed to to my phone. Oh, so weird. Okay, so you got it. Okay. 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 All righty. Thank you. But now I got to make myself presentable for video. Now you could turn. You could keep the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you want. We all look good. I like the video because I miss work. I really do miss it. But don't tell Soshi. She has an ad. She's not chimed in yet, right? <laughs> oh, my. And how are you guys? How are I'm you doing really pretty well. Happy. Everybody's doing well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cheryl, I got a quick question for you. Oh, okay, you shoot. Me, Cheryl? Yes, I can uh, hear you. When you Send me the documents. I will take a, a, a photo of them, okay, of, of the signature page and, and uh, email that to you. That's fine. That'll work for now because our, because our um, resolutions are not notarized, I send them by email anyway to the assessor's office and also to the client. The assessor's office is not up. They're running on, you know, they're not as, uh, I guess, computer savvy. So they, they have limited access, but they will definitely get it in an email. So. At least they'll have it. Perfect. Yeah, and that's all coming I need is the signature eight. page. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. We're coming up on eight, the eight o'clock hour, and I see we got sixteen plus people. So I'm sure a lot of people are on mute. Real quick, guys, how do I see the conversation on the side? Does anyone know what do I, yeah, what do I need yeah. to press? Okay, so um, in the okay. middle of your screen. Um, you have a, uh, there's a rectangular bar. Yes. I got it. Mm -hmm. Thank yes. you. So for everybody who's on, if you, if you may not be familiar with teams, there's this bar in the middle and there's a, if you run your cursor over it, you'll see one of the icons says show conversation. And then, um, on your right hand side of your screen, you'll be able to see the quote conversation. At the moment, there isn't much of a conversation, but there could be, there would be. And so if you have a question or something, that's a good place to put it. And then Howard will see it and can call on you. Okay, we're at the eight o'clock hour and we've got uh, 20 plus people on. So I'm going to uh, call the meeting to order. We clearly have a quorum. So one of the things that I want to first do is ask everybody who isn't already on mute to go on mute. Uh, Irene, do you have the roll? Yeah. The roll call? So I want to remind everybody that this is being recorded and we will be also taking minutes, but uh, we will proceed pretty close to how we do a regular in-person meeting with the roll call first. All right. Uh, Howard Mails. Here. Pam McDonough. Here. Uh, Aaron Alleman or Simone Weil. Simone Weil's here. Uh, Todd Cabanban. Todd Cabanban is here. Uh, Teresa Cordova. Here. Good morning. Uh, Maurice Cox or Brian, who, or the Department of Planning, City of Chicago? Yeah, Brian Hacker's here. Oh, okay, that's what I thought. Uh, David Day? 
Uh, Christy De Laurentiis. Leah Domenico. I'm here, present. Did, did, did I say that wrong? I'm sorry. It's okay. No problem, Irene. You can t tell me later. <laughs> Christine Foss. Manny Flores. Here. Uh, let's see. Sochi Flores. Actually, she'll be joining late. Uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Gaynor or representative from the 10th district. This is Noreen from Commissioner Gaynor. Hi, Noreen. Uh, Andy Gear. Yep, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Graham Grady. Present. Good morning. Sharon Lagenza. Uh, Daryl Newell. Karen Norrington Reeves or Thaker Leslie. This is Phaedra. Good morning. Rob Rose. Rob Rose here. Good morning. Good morning. Ed Sitter. I am on. David Shaves. Here. Uh, Tony Smith. Here. Thank you. Uh, uh, Deb Stone. Present. Will Towns. Present. Uh, Rob Tucker is not attending, but has given his proxy to Howard. Uh, Eric Varela. Okay, uh, John Watson. John is present. Good morning. Good morning. And John Yonan. I am here. Good morning. All right. Thank and you, then, Irene. Uh, well, Anybody let's joined do... Yeah, that we missed? Also, Anybody I, joined? Th Go ahead. Uh, I think there, in terms of the Bureau of Staff, uh, how about if we... PED staff uh, in, announce themselves so people know who's on the line. Uh, Cheryl Caldwell on the line. Mohammed Elahi on the line. Vita Britt Handy on the line. Good morning, it's Susan Campbell. Hey, Susan. Hey. Good morning, it's Dominic Tassi. Good morning, Andre Ashmore. Uh, Good morning, Artist Katsuaris. All right. I think that's everybody. And Sochi will be joining shortly. And I just want to make sure there are no members who joined in during the roll call that we're not uh, able to say present. Has anyone not been pulsed? Yeah. Hi. Good morning. It's Sharon. Oh. Sharon Lagenza. Good morning, hey, Sharon. Sharon. Thank you. So uh, the. Uh, the Go ahead, Irene. The only other thing I was going to just say for people that may not be familiar with Teams is we're going to be using the chat function. Um, and so if in the middle of your screen, there's probably a gray rectangular bar. If you run your cursor across that, uh, things will, you know, words will show up like turn camera on mute blah 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 so when you get to the little icon that looks like a conversation box from a comic strip that will be show conversation so if you would like to uh ask a question or make a comment you could just write it in the the conversation or the chat box and howard will be monitoring it and he will call on you at the first opportunity. Or during the times where we're talking about issues for vote and comment, people can do it at those times when the committee subchairs are are uh, managing the process. And, and for so, people on the phone, I guess, who don't have the chat opportunity, uh, for EDEC members in particular, uh, you will have to politely uh, interrupt. 
or announce yourselves that you have a comment. And for the purposes of vote taking, uh, I uh, believe we're okay with uh, voice vote. We don't need to use this feature that I will ask for, uh, or the committee chairs will ask for a yay or nay, and we'll count uh, from the smaller voices uh, and then make our own arithmetic. Uh, I just want to say before I go to public comment that I'm delighted to hear everybody's voice. My uh, sense is everybody's a better IT person than they were two months ago. And uh, thank you, Irene, for helping uh, explain how this works, and it's great. Uh, I'm going to move to public comment. Are there any members of the public who've dialed in that wish to have a few minutes? There are no members in the public who have uh, asked for time, so I want to move on to just some remarks. I want to thank the Bureau and its staff uh, for helping us to increase our digital capabilities. Um, in the near future, we will be uh, needed, I believe, and we have to remain nimble, responsible, and ready for action, especially by our subcommittees. And I want to thank all of our chairs and all of our members. I also want to welcome the new members who joined last meeting. The county now has a web page that's dedicated to economic development. And also, I want to thank Soshi Flores, who is our bureau chief, not on the line yet, but uh, there is a newsletter that's been very helpful, and I uh, know she has some time reserved at the end of this meeting where we're going to be uh, hearing from her. The, today we have two incentives, and uh, Irene is correct, I have Bob Tucker's proxy. Is there any other member who has a proxy, been given a proxy by a member who's not present? Perfect. So uh, with that and the fact that it sounds like we are all well, let's continue with moving on to the next agenda item. And I would like to turn it over to uh, Andy or Sharon. Uh, sure, Howard, this is Andy. I'll take over for here and I'll introduce the topic. So um, as many people, as we heard in the, the uh, briefing to EDAC last, uh, I think it was about a month or so ago now, um, you know, Cook County will be receiving uh, additional funding through the CARES Act. Can other people put their cells on mute? I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Okay, great. Um, so again, that uh, we received federal funding through the CARES Act, which essentially uh, is in the form of additional CDBG, ESG, which is Emergency Solutions Grants, and HOPWA funding. Uh, this was part of the uh, CARES Act that was most recently passed, uh, or at least in 2.5. Um, and so what we really need to do is what we're asking for is uh, we need to amend our public process around uh, public participation plan to allow us to really have a public meeting and do this virtually. So we're making amendments uh, on the fly as and the staff is really being adept at trying to manage this uh, in order to really then move forward with uh, the recommended actions that we will need to take and for the utilization of those federal dollars that are being passed through. So at this point, I'll I'll turn it over to Dom to sort of walk us through uh, pretty quickly. I think the changes uh, in the participation plan. And Dom, correct Thank you, me Andy. if uh, anything that I uh, went over that may have been incorrect. Uh, no. Good morning, and uh, thanks, Andy. You uh, you nailed it. Um, I think, you know, this is an item, it's called the Citizen Participation Plan that has sort of operated in the background um, throughout the entire existence of, of EDAC. Um, the last time the county had amended it was before um, EDAC it was, was formed and has been reviewing our HUD work. Um, so you've sort of seen it in operation and it's, it's in, you know, guides why we bring our annual plans full of Full of our projects to EDAC, uh, why we bring our final performance reports, and then more regularly why we bring different types of amendments when we're adding new projects or making changes to projects. Um, 
so it, it guides our public process for our HUD funding. Um, you know, in this case, as Andy said, um, most of the changes we've put forward are incorporating um, some language to address the sort of current COVID-19 environment um, and, and allow us the flexibility both that HUD has, has put in place and uh, just some additional flexibility around our amendment process to allow us to move, uh, move more quickly. So really there's kind of three things I wanna cover that we did in the document. If you, if you look at the document, the, the major changes are highlighted in yellow. Um, so the first, first item, and it happens with the exact same language, but in a few places throughout the document um, on pages six, seven, and nine, um, if you're looking, is around adding some language that allows virtual hearings during a public health crisis like this one. Um, and it's in line with guidance HUD had put forward around virtual hearings. Um, the, the second and, and probably most substantive and relevant item related to COVID-19 is on page eight. And it's the, the last bullet that's, that's highlighted in yellow and, and, and is a modification on page eight is around um, giving us more flexibility on the amendment process. You know, typically in, you know, this is what EDEC has seen quite a bit over the past year. Um, anytime we're adding a new activity or bringing a, uh, a, a making a substantial change, um, you know, we, we bring, we have to bring that activity through a public process, which includes bringing it to EDAC. Um, that new bullet uh, gives us flexibility in a couple ways. One, it's, it's referencing any special public participation requirements that HUD might put in place, um, not just about COVID-19, but we included language more broadly about um, emergency or disaster events. Um, and in this case, HUD has um, you know, reduced the public process quite a bit. It's usually a 30-day public comment process. HUD is allowing you to um, do it requiring you to do at least five days uh, in this environment. Um, so this language sort of allows us to incorporate that sort of uh, new guidance from HUD. Uh, it also gives a, you know, normally we, as I had said before, any new activity or if we increase the budget by 25%, um, that triggers a substantial amendment. Uh, in this case, uh, in the case of COVID-19 or another, you know, similar emergency or disaster declaration, it's giving us, you know, flexibility to make uh, necessary modifications as regular amendments. Uh, so essentially, kind of at the discretion of of Cook County. Um, so that's uh, the most substantive one in terms of incorporating uh, process changes. And then the last item is, is a little bit uh, further up that page eight. Uh, and this one is actually not specifically related to COVID-19. It's, it's one, an, an amendment we've been thinking, or an edit we've been thinking about making for a little while, uh, essentially related to the, the same substantial amendment process. Our old plan had had a sort of, had a blanket 25% threshold for a budget change. And just over the course of years, we'd found that to be a little bit limiting, particularly on smaller grants. Uh, using an you know an absolute 25% uh, increase, you know if you're talking about a, a small social service grant, it doesn't really give you a lot of room for a budget modification. So essentially, that new language puts the floor in uh, that allows for a larger change on smaller projects. Uh, effectively, yeah, one as projects get to a, a larger size, it doesn't really uh, it no longer it's in line with our old policy. So. That is the nutshell version of the changes. Um, welcome any questions or comments. And, and we do need approval on this item. Thank you. Thank you, Dom. Uh, want to, before Andy goes to taking comments, I do want to say that this is the component of what I mentioned in my initial remarks about being nimble and making changes because this is something new 
it is uh, very appreciated that the Bureau has taken a look at how we have done things and how we need to be ready to do things in the future. So I want to thank you and the Bureau very much, Don. Andy? Yeah, I don't see any questions in the chat. So at this point in time, I'll uh, ask for uh, a, you know, uh, um, a motion to approve uh, the changes to the citizen participation plan as outlined by uh, Dominic. Andy, it's Christy DeLaurentis. I'm sorry, before you call the question, can I ask a question of Dom? Sure. Dom, I noticed that your, your uh, amendments uh, mention that during a public meeting for questions to be answered by EDAC or a public uh, board member as appropriate. I'm just wondering if you wanted to put, typically there's for public hearing, uh, it allows for comments uh, as well, and there's not any recognition of that. And I'm just wondering if you wanted to insert that somewhere. So question or comments from the public or questions and, you know, go on. So just, uh, you know, question about that. It, it doesn't necessitate an amendment per se, but I thought I would just ask. Sorry, so I muted myself. Um, no problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking back at the language we added, which we had sort of taken from the HUD recommended language around allowing a, uh, you know, allowing virtual hearing for real time Any questions. Um, How many? So I think, I'm sorry, was it a comment or background noise? Yeah, sorry. Um, Go ahead, John. Tom. No, so I, no, I think it's a, it's a, a good. A good point, Christy. I think it doesn't, uh, the language doesn't specifically mention that. I think it allows for that. And I, if I'm remembering our public notice that we did, um, it did invite um, public comment it did. ahead of this. Um, in addition to, you know, being able to join the meeting and ask questions in real time. Um, but it, it's a, a good point that um yeah we'll think about how we handle that and and uh or maybe process wise if if uh that makes sense to the group if it's approved with an amendment to add you know add a clause like you're saying to those three three places where we add the virtual hearing language to also specifically mention it um the idea of providing comments up front. Um, so I guess I'm seeing it two ways. One, we could add the explicit language, um, or we can we can leave it as is, knowing that our intent is to still allow for comment ahead of time, and it's just not explicitly mentioned here. Yeah, so, uh, I, I would recommend that we can uh, we can add that into the approval. Is to uh, reflect again uh, that we would like to add some language around a public comment process, okay? I mean, it, it has been part of our practice at all of the subcommittee meetings and as we've uh, uh, to allow for public comment and for, so I, I think it's more just uh, finalizing and formalizing what has been practice. I'll check so Andy, that uh, that's what I wanted. Uh, Andy, when you make that make that motion, is that a motion that it, with the amended explicit uh, co public comment component, uh, yeah. that would be what we're voting on? Yep, I would make that recommendation. Thank That's you. A good then, point, Christy. Uh, go ahead, go ahead and call. Thank you, Christy. Okay. Uh, hey, Andy, can I add Andy, if I could, um, what I realized is there's a, and this is something we could just sort out the right place to add or make, make maybe make a language clarification, but on the last page of the document, there's a section that's titled um, complaints. It's, at, it's right before the appendix. Um, it's prob probably more accurately should say, you know, public comments slash complaints. 
but it does make a general reference to instructions for providing public comment or provided in the public notice. Um, so I think it, it broadly gets at what Christie's raising. Um, it hadn't been highlighted because that has been, you know, just similar to our past process. Um, so we can, we can, I think you can proceed as we're talking about, but we, that might be the place to, to make a more explicit reference. Yeah, so I, I think the main point here is that uh, what we'll do is advance a recommendation that will make sure that the document does incorporate the public comment, which has been part of our practice. And so that's what I would, you know, if we're addressing it there or in the in the compliance section, uh, I think uh, everybody should be comfortable that we'll make sure that that's uh, incorporated as per the recommendation. Uh, this is uh, uh, William Towns. Uh, yeah. I, I move that we approve the Cook County Revised Citizen Participation Plan with the suggested amendment of adding in a uh, public uh, comment uh, portion to the document. Second. Thanks, Second. Walt. Second, this is Teresa. Thanks, Teresa. So, Howard, you, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Thanks, Don. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, Thank Howard. You, Thanks, everyone. Uh, Dom and Andy. Uh, we're going to move on to, we have two more actions on incentives ahead of us on seven C's. And uh, again, Pam or Will? It's yeah, in I'll, I'll, in your court. I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. Um, first, I want to. Um, <clears throat> make a, a comment. I, I said this in the committee because we have three new committee members and there's in addition to our three new committee members, there's two other board members that may not have heard this, but um, just for clarification, when we do our incentives, they're not like some typical incentives where you have a but for argument. Um, there's, you know, several criteria laid out in the ordinance and we just basically are required to make sure that each proposal follows those. So that's just to give you a, um, you know, uh, there's a difference in so what's sometimes perceived in incentives. So um, I, we have two seven C's that we want to present today. Um, Cheryl is going to present them. Uh, do you want to do 519 West Algonquin, Arlington Heights, Cheryl? Okay, that's fine. I thought I shared the screen. Um, it was it was up there, but then it went away. <laughs> I don't know. Let me try it again real quick. If not, you guys all got this in your email. I told uh, Muhammad I did a test with my husband, but apparently yeah. I am having problems pulling it up. Uh, Cheryl, it was up. I don't know what you did to turn it down. I don't know what I did either, Muhammad. But I can't. I can't seem to find it. I lost it. Okay, um, so I'm going to go on because I don't want to delay what we're doing here. The first one is uh, 519 Algonquin. Do you guys see that? No? Okay. Well, we had the um, subcommittee review two Class 7C projects, and the first one is 519 West Algonquin Road in Arlington Heights. This is a no purchase for value with new construction and substantial rehab. The total project cost is $3.2 million and the private capital investment to present value of tax incentive is 2.3 to one. This project will create 26 new full-time jobs and 13 new part-time jobs while retaining 11 jobs. And they will also create 20 construction jobs the applicant currently owns the property and occupies the site as European Crystal Banquet and Conference Center. The rear of the building will be demolished and a new five-story full-service boutique hotel, the Chase Hotel, will be constructed adjacent to the ex existing uh, or remaining banquet facility. The applicant will remove approximately 5,200 square feet of existing banquet hall to construct the hotel space, leaving 10,000 square feet of remaining banquet space. 
The Chase Hotel will feature conference room space, a lobby bakery, 64 rooms, and a 5,000 square foot rooftop terrace, which half will be enclosed and the other half outdoors. Today we have with us to represent the company, uh, Dan Perkowski and Chris Murphy of Gordon and Perkowski, and we should have James Casares, Casares rather, the managing director, and Christina Casares, the president of operations, on the line, along with um, Michael Miritus from the Village of Arlington. Hello, welcome everyone. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. So at this time, if you have any questions, um, they are available to answer for you. It's, um, it's Graham Grady. I, I have a question. Sure. Grab your record. Um, good, good morning, uh, presenters. Um, I have a question. Um, has the um, financing or any other uh, aspect of this project uh, been um, sidetracked or delayed as a result of the uh, pandemic? I don't, I don't believe uh, it has because I believe it's self-financed. Um, Christina uh, or uh, James, you want to address that? Yeah, um, this is James on the line. It is, it is self, it is self-financed, so it hasn't been, uh, has not been delayed. The only delayed delays that are happening are the interior work. Um, some of the construction crews and unions um, have asked to put it on pause until things have calmed down. So the exterior work continues to happen. Yes. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Um, it says in our, our report that the zoning is pending. Does anybody have a status up, up, update on that? <laughs> so this, this uh, Mike, not unless you can chime in differently, the zoning is a commercial is commercial zoned, and I don't know if there. I didn't get a particular zoning number. We just kind of went through. You know, going through shelter in place, so we, I didn't get back to the village on that. But Mike, is there anything specific we need to know regarding the zoning code? Yeah, hi, good morning. Michael Murtis, business development coordinator for the village of Arlington Heights. Um, there's no zoning issue. Zoning has been approved along with the village board's approval for recommendation of the class 7C as well. Michael, this is Howard Mails. I just have a question about the date of that approval? When was that given? You know, unfortunately, I, I have to dig through my documents here real quick because I'm kind of, I'm working at home and, um, well, I'm just looking approval. for pre-crisis or, or during the oh, crisis. Oh, it was pre, it was, it, the, the approval was given definitely pre-crisis several months ago. Thank you. You're welcome. Howard, this is Mohammed. The date, the date was uh, October first, twenty eight. When the uh, whole world <laughs> ago. <laughs> what a world. Yeah. Um, have we received the letter of support from the commissioner? Yes, we have. Um, which I mentioned. Uh, Kevin Morrison. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah, it was the thirteenth. March twelve. March twelve. Right. Okay. Thanks. Um, if there are no other questions, uh, the committee is recommending to the full board that we approve the 7C for the uh, 519 well, conference. Sorry. Uh, I think there's a question in the chat. Oh, sorry. Uh, it, it says uh, it would be helpful to hear a bit more from the village about their process for evaluating the 7C and reasoning for supporting this project. Also, are any other incentives being offered by the village? Thank you, Simone. Yeah, thank you for asking. So basically, I kind of got it broken up a little bit, but basically just for context in terms of village support, does that more or less answer, or is that more or less the question? And, and if any additional incentives were given? Yeah. Okay, let me answer that one first. No, it was the, it was strictly the support for the Class 7C. Now, in terms of why the village supported it, one, as I think the documentation that was attached shows, the property value uh, has either stagnated or declined the past several years. It was an opportunity to continue 
redevelopment of the southern corridor of Algonquin and Arlington Heights Road, which is a key gateway into our community. Um, and thirdly, too, um, is the development of a new hotel that's not designed to be competitive with our existing hotel, opportunity to bring more people into Arlington Heights and further grow the tax base in the community. Those were all the kind of the key factors that led to the village's support of this potential incentive. Um, is that, do you need anything else, Simone? Oh, and just the question if the village will be offering any other incentives for this project. Okay. Yeah. We have not gone through any other formal approval processes other than this class 7 C. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat. Um, so um, I'd entertain a motion to approve the 7 C for this Arlington Heights project. Second, Yonan. Thanks. Um, I guess all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay, great. Um, I think. Um, congratulations. To the oh, yeah. Do we have any abstentions? Yes. Uh, CMAP abstains. Okay. Um, the motion. Okay. The motion passes. Uh, congratulations to the team. I want to tell you that at this point, if we were live, we would invite you to come back, maybe in a year. Uh, but that invitation stands, and hopefully we'll get to uh, meet you and hopefully can shake hands. Thank, Thank you, you very for your much. time and consideration with this project. We, we appreciate everyone's uh, aid in this difficult time. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much, everybody, for the support of this project. It's appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. And should we drop procedurally? Should we drop off the call then? Yes. Yeah, if you'd like to. Or you okay. can stay. Thank you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. Have have a safe. Thank you for participating. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Stay well. Okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye. All right. Now Cheryl's going to uh, present the Silver Palatine uh, Project Seven C. Okay, the Silver Palatine um, LLC is another 7C application located 1410 West Northwest Highway in Palatine. Uh, this is a purchase for value, occupation of abandoned property with substantial rehab. The total project cost is 3.8 mil and the private capital investment to present value of tax incentive is 4.7 to 1. This job create, uh, the job creation on this project is four new full-time jobs, 12 retained jobs, and 20 construction jobs. The applicant will develop a kitchen and bath design showroom, and the tenant will be Logan Square Aluminum Supply Incorporated, which is a related entity. They will occupy the subject pro property. Uh, one portion of the showroom will be designated as Kohler Signature Store by Studio 41. And the other part of the showroom will be designated as Studio 41 Home Design Showroom, which will display products other than the Cola brand. We have, uh, oh, one quick thing. The app, uh, the committee asked the applicant to, uh, they gave us a salary range in um, some of the uh, positions, the manager's position, uh, the kitchen designer's position, and the showroom sales. That included the base salary and bonus or commission. So uh, the committee asked them to break it down. And I do have those figures. Uh, for the manager, the base salary is $130,000 plus $10,000 bonus. The kitchen designer, uh, the average salary is $50,000 base plus uh, $18,000 in commission. And the showroom sales average of $40,000 base plus $20,000 in commission. Um, I just want to ask the commit the committee was is that breakdown okay with you? Yeah, I think it was Phaedra's question. Phaedra, do you oh, want to? Phaedra, I'm sorry, Phaedra. I should have asked you specifically. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that that's very helpful. Thank you very much for providing that information. Uh, we do have uh, 
attending the meeting with us today. Uh, David S. Martin, a, a, part, a partner in Neil Gerber and Eisenberg LLP. And we also have Barry Cohotis. I hope I pronounced that right, Barry. He's the Chief Financial Officer of Silver Palatine LLC. And Michael Jacobs is uh, presenting from the Village of Palatine. Good morning. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask at this time. Maybe the village would like to explain why this is important to your community. Mike Jacobs. Hello. <laughs> or not. <laughs> okay, so Mike, I will say that he did, pre he was uh, a part yeah. of the subcommittee meeting and he did give a presentation where he stated right. that the village was in full support. I'm not quite certain what happened this morning. Well, this is Graham. Are there minutes from that committee meeting? No. Um, not completed at this time, no. But there will be. Um, uh, what I wanted to say is that in the absence of minutes from that committee meeting, perhaps you can just um, uh, elaborate on your statement. Um, so we'll have kind of a record of that in lieu of the person not being available to provide that. Or Pam or Pam could do it. Just just so we have that in a part of our minutes here as a basis for our decision and action. So I can state, Pam, from my recollection, if I'm wrong, please correct me, that um he did state that the village was in full support of this process, of this uh project. The the building had been vacant and it allowed the building to be uh, substantially rehabbed and brought up to code. He did not specify of any other um, incentives that are being provided by the village. And that's all of, that's the regulation that I have of that, of that conversation. Anyone yeah. else? Okay. I didn't, let me see if I wrote any. Yeah, the only notes I wrote had to do with, um, you know, the salary issues that Phaedra brought up, so. Um, I didn't write has any. anyone. Go ahead, Howard. I'm wondering if has anyone in the bureau or uh, even on the team for the uh, Silver Palatine heard from Michael this morning? Yeah, this is uh, David, David Martin. Um, I have not heard from Michael. I anticipated that he was going to be on the call. I'm not sure why uh, he's not, but um, I can uh, represent. Uh, and Mr. Cohotas can confirm this. There are no, there are no other incentives uh, from Palatine that uh, this project is receiving, other than uh, the application for the 7C. Can Can you um, give us any more detail on why they support this, based on your conversations with the village? Uh, yes, uh, this was a property that was previously owned by a car dealership. Uh, Silver Palatine acquired the property in January of 2018. Prior to that time, uh, the property did have some environmental issues, and uh, those uh, have been uh, remediated, obviously. And <clears throat> It is a, a, a location that the, the has uh, sat uh, empty for quite some time. So this is abandoned property, and Silver um, so Palatine um, collaborated with with Palatine, uh, and and uh, they agreed that if uh, if the seven C uh, was available, that that they would go forth with this with this project so uh the i can tell you that um, uh, the village has been extremely supportive during this whole process and I, and and mr jacobs was on the call uh at the subcommittee hearing uh last week and uh, as um miss caldwell has indicated uh was very supportive of the project at that hearing I think that helps to, to kind of, you know, give us reasons why the village would be supportive. <clears throat> um, does anyone feel we need anything additional? Does anyone feel we need anything additional? Feel we need anything additional? Feel we need anything additional? 
Now Pam, it's Christy De Laurentiis. If I can just make a comment. Sure. I do think in the, uh, oh, sorry, let me just turn my speaker up just a little bit. Um, I do think that in the future, included in our packet, we should get a copy of the resolutions that are passed at the municipal level, especially if we're working from home and externally where it's hard to anticipate, uh, you know, everyone's uh, participation and availability. It just seems to make sense because often municipalities uh, outline within their own resolutions why it's important. So it'd be helpful to have that as a matter of course for all future uh, you know, projects that are coming through the pipeline. I don't think that would be onerous for the staff to collect those and present those to us. No, that's not that's not a problem. The subcommittee did get a copy of the resolution. I think uh, quite some time ago, Irene and I tried to find a way to reduce the amount of paper that we were sitting sending to the full board, but we will have, I have no issues adding that to the summary. Uh, um, Thank information you. that we send to you. Okay. I, I think the issue uh, in front of the uh, members here is our uh, basically the norm is to have someone from uh, a locality, the municipality, the village to just be on a call in the future or hopefully in person. And while I'm fine with what's been stated, uh, as long as we could back this up on the up, uh, other side of a vote that the uh, uh, individual from the village is uh, from Palatine is uh, has already weighed in in favor and just could not be on this call, then, um, you know, I think we can move forward without getting too much more distraction because it is not the case that we we'd like to see this person uh, in position missing. We want to hear from the village generally. Uh, hi, this is Rob Rose, uh, and I think this this goes back to the comment that uh, Pam made earlier. I think this is great information if we have it. However, this is not a requirement in order to grant the incentive, other than knowing that the village has already approved the incentive. So it would be great to hear their motivation and to know why they would do it. But in terms of what's required, if we have an incentive that's been granted by the village, that is a requirement for in, per the ordinance in terms of us making a decision to move forward so that we wouldn't get sidetracked with if we don't hear from the village that we can't make a decision. I don't think that we're allowed to be able to make to have that sort of discretion in terms of uh, delaying a decision on the incentive. Yeah, I think you're right. Plus, plus, you know, I could point to places times even when we had physical meetings where you know, maybe the village didn't show up, but as long as they've passed their local ordinance and we have a copy of it, which to Christy's point, if you have a copy of that, you can look at it. I think we're, we're where we need to be. So I think in the future, we'll just make sure it's fairly easy to just add it to the documents that we're already getting, you know, on, you know, electronically. So um, we can do that. Um, Move to vote. Yeah, I don't see any other. If anybody has any questions, there's none in the message thing. So um, I, I'd ask for a motion to approve the Silver Valentine LLC 7C. So moved. This is Rob Rose. Rob, okay. Do we have a second? Second, Graham Brady. Thanks, Graham. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bob Tucker. Yep. And Aye. proxy. Opposed? Do we have any abstentions? CMAP. CMAP, CMAP abstained. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, the, the project is approved. Congratulations to um, all our participants. Um, thank you for presenting this to us. <clears throat> thank you very thank much you very for much. your time. These difficult Congratulations. times. Thank you very and, much. Uh, yep. And we'll ask you back in a year, hopefully in person and we can basically be together uh, and congratulate you. Take care and thank you, stay well. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Okay, so uh, now we are gonna move on to a little period for the EDAC members who all have other lives than EDAC. Uh, I'll start because when we look at 
what we're doing in response to COVID through our professional lives, uh, one of the things that I can report right away is uh, a couple months ago, a council on digital equity uh, called CODE has launched for the county. And this digital equity initiative speaks to a lot of things, including how people can and cannot participate in such actions as education, job seeking, communication with their government. It's all about connectivity. It's about devices. It's about proficiency. And one of the first initiatives I just wanted to be uh, to make everyone aware on EDAC was on the telemedicine front, a partnership with the Jocelyn Center, which is on the North Shore, has partnered with Cook County to provide immediate crisis counseling, multiple therapeutic sessions with psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, to our county first responders. This is free service. It starts and ends when they know that the individual who's contacted the hotline has been put into some other system of care that's longer term if needed, or if it's just managed in the short term. This is ongoing, and it's a standing offer right now. It was put through August. It may extend depending upon what happens for the state. But it's been announced to the county first responders, including our county hospital, even the morgue uh, staff, and uh, all the sheriffs. So I want to personally say that CODE is very proud of uh, their partnership with the Jocelyn Center. Anyone else, please, uh, you know, put up that you'd like to speak if you have anything regarding an initiative. I'm seeing. Uh, Howard. Uh, yes, please go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm 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 trying to piggyback. It's Christy DeLorentis. I'm trying to uh, navigate between the the Microsoft Teams because it's reverberating in my phone. So I'm, I'm just going from my phone. So I apologize if I'm stepping on anyone. I just wanted to report a little bit about what SSMMA has been working on. Obviously, we're trying to provide direct assistance to uh, municipalities in support of their COVID-19 activity and want to um, just really call out and recognize the county's support on personal protection equipment and providing that to local jurisdictions and first responders. Also, their activity related to um, providing, in, you know, real-time information on, uh, on positivity and deaths and social vulnerability that's very ha helpful for us to track and to be paying attention to. So, um, a, a respite housing, they've, they've really stepped up, obviously, based on need, but wanted to recognize that to the group. I also wanted to share that we're uh, at South Suburban Mayor's Managers is, is working. Uh, we have uh, briefed this uh, committee in the past about the Southland Development Authority and the activity that's underway in partnership with the South Suburban Region Civic uh, and, and Philanthropic uh, Partners, including the county. And uh, we have essentially utilized the the organization, the institution, uh, to start doing real-time assistance to small businesses. So we're partnering with our local small business development center and helping uh, connect local businesses in the south suburbs to to uh, personal or excuse me, uh, payroll protection services and uh, funding from banks, et cetera, really trying to make sure that we're stabilizing and triaging businesses and we're building upon that going forward. So that's uh, something that has been extraordinarily helpful in the short term. And long term, we're hoping that these uh, relationships that are forged help us move some of the businesses forward, help them grow and support and recover fully from COVID-19. So I just wanted to share that because the uh, it's a innovative strategy that we've had to implement in these times and, and it's uh, bearing fruit with helping people connect to funds that are available to get them through you know, this near-term period and hopefully longer term it'll help flourish businesses that we have in existence and then grow in the new economy. 
Thank you so much, Christy, and thank you also for being a, a, a member of the council. Uh, Will, I see you have an update. Will Towns. Uh, yes, thank, thank you, uh, Chairman. Just uh, briefly, um, uh, for those, I think everyone knows, but um, I recently uh, switched over from Benefit Chicago to a new fund called Chi-Town Impact. Uh, we're an equity fund uh, and are looking to place long-term equity uh, into businesses, uh, particularly in response to COVID, that will allow them to bridge over the pandemic uh, back to some sort of normal uh, sort of markets. Uh, and so if these organizations were previously experiencing some sort of organic growth or uh, need some capital to take advantage of some specific uh, current market opportunity, uh, we're looking to find those uh, businesses. We've already met with the South uh, Southland Development Authority and Bob Weisbord and the team. They're um, pulling some information together for us. Our only contingent is that the business, uh, we're looking primarily for minority black and brown businesses. Uh, and secondly, uh, that the business is located uh, within an opportunity zone. Uh, and so we can speak more about that individually if you like, but we're trying to ensure we provide the liquidity necessary uh, for these businesses to bridge over, make any adjustments that may be imposed upon them by the state or their local municipality, uh, and that they can make it back uh, to when we return to some sort of equilibrium. Um, and so that's uh, where we're at. Hey, well, uh, anyway, congratulations. What, what's your website? I just tried to pull it up. I want to read more about it. What, what is your website? So, so we currently do not have a website. Uh, this fund is about a month old. Uh, we're a $20 million fund. Uh, that uh, our principals are private uh, uh, private citizens. It's a family office uh, in which they've committed uh, currently about $20 million towards this. And if we can find an efficient way to get the capital to flow, uh, they're willing to do significantly more. Congratulations. Thank you. Susan, you say you have a question for Will? Yes. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, Hello? good morning. I will. Um, are you all going to be providing technical assistance also in addition to the fund or just uh, funding after an applicant has already been tea, uh, teed up, if you will? So, so we, we are private. It's a private equity, for-profit private equity fund that's uh, socially bent. So our, we, we are becoming part owners uh, in the business. So we're not necessarily providing technical assistance in the way that you would traditionally look at it. But we want to ensure that we can as ensure that our investment has the business grow uh, mm -hmm. with the intent that they are creating new jobs and helping economic development. We've got a very low hurdle rate. We're looking at like one times return um, uh, at, at best. Uh, so we're a, a low uh, investor, but we we are an equity provider. And so we're, we'll be part owner or part of the team. So we don't provide technical assistance in the traditional sense, but we'll ensure the business has what it needs uh, as a part of our investment in order to be successful. Thank you. Phaedra, I see you have an update. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. This is Phaedra Leslie with Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership. I wanted to share a couple of things. Um, firstly, related to businesses, we circulated a information about a, with a quick turnaround for a uh, layoff aversion emergency assistance grant under Department of Commerce uh, Office of Employment and Training and uh, received, uh, I think, more than 50 um, requests for reimbursement. It did not cover benefits and wages. It was one of the easiest grants that a company could apply for, um, for uh, reimbursement on uh, things like hardware and software for converting to telework, um, cleaning supplies. Uh, so this was emergency assistance related to COVID, but again, did not include rent utilities or money for um, wages and benefits. So none of those things, but retraining staff under COVID-19, supplies, cleaning, telework, hardware, software, um, those kinds of things. Um, so we uh, uh, submitted more, I think uh, around, um, uh, $1.2 million in reimbursement requests for businesses throughout Chicago and uh, Suburban Cook. Um, I think it was pretty balanced between Chicago and Suburban Cook in terms of the requests and the kinds of um, uh, requests that were being uh, made. We will hear back from um, 
we submitted, uh, we received more than 50 applications. I think we submitted all of those. Uh, we had to go through a budget re review process. The window was about two weeks. Um, but I'm really uh, pleased to see how, how spread out the funds are being um, considered from Schaumburg to Chicago Heights, Park Forest, uh, pretty much all throughout Suburban Cook. We received information um, from, and requests from companies. So I will know more about approved applications and can give an update in a later um, convening. Uh, probably more likely in um, June or July on how much was actually approved by DCEO to fund um, and can probably tell uh, if people have questions about specifics, can have an offline conversation um, if there are specific questions for munis specific municipalities. I'm happy to do that. Uh, and then also, um, we are still fully operational. We are serving job seekers and employers um, countywide virtually. We have not opened our, uh, reopened our centers to the public, but our services um, are still being facilitated. We created a uh, hiring page on our website. Um, it's shycookworks, C-H-I-C-O-O-K-Works.org forward slash work now forward slash uh, and individuals uh, anyone can access that page and get connected to employers who are currently hiring um, we've seen significant spikes in hiring in as much as we've seen significant temporary uh, permanent uh, layoffs and furloughs uh, we're conducting layoff events virtually and partnering with um, national corporations to develop um, sector specific materials. Uh, DCEO's website, IllinoisWorkNet.com, which is the Office of Employment Training site, has access to, to information for those impacted by layoffs uh, and employers, um, employer information related to COVID-19, small business grants, uh, other supports, all of the resources that are um, shared across the, con uh, the state are localized on that website for job seekers and employers. There are a, a number of links, videos, people can do self-directed um, uh, searches um, and uh, resume functions, that kind of thing. Uh, DCEO today is facilitating a virtual job fair and we're working with uh, our employer partners for sector focused and individual virtual hiring events. So we haven't had any break in any of the work we've been facilitating. The only thing that's changed is um, facilitating that work virtually. Phaedra, that's amazing. I want to thank you for that great update. And sure. to also thank the, the partnership for being part of, of uh, the Code Council. Uh, especially when it comes to looking at upskilling of, of our workforce in the new world. Uh, Amelia, you have uh, asked to have some time? Yes, um, I would love, uh, I'm, I'm delighted to uh, join this uh, council again when I, uh, 10 years ago when I was part of the executive team at BMO Harris, I was on this council and I'm uh, at the WBDC now. And just many of you are familiar with the WBDC, but I just want to share what we're doing to be responsive to the current situation. Um, there's three things that we do that are distinctive. One has to do with technical assistance. Um, both one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling, workshops, uh, we have seven curricula in English and in Spanish, um, access to capital, and of course certification and procurement activity. But as it relates to what is dominating all of our time right now, because of the dire situation of small businesses, has to do with technical assistance and access to capital. Um, we um, uh, are familiar with all the public and private sector uh, loan and grant opportunities. We are working with all of the public sector providers. Um, we are looking at what is in the best interest of our clients and directing them to the right source of capital and helping them prepare for that conversation, both um, in, in uh, communicating it with documentation, as well as um, what the focus of the conversation should be. We have uh, 
three offices in Cook County. One is in the southern suburbs, um, and all of our offices are extremely busy right now. We are functioning. Um, we have been preparing. We have been in a multi-channel environment for quite a while, but going to 100% virtual is taxing. But but we are um, we were prepared for it, even though it's quite taxing. Um, I I can tell you that um, the big gaps that are out in the, there are, there are capital sources out there. As all of you know, they're overwhelming to uh, the business owners that we are working with, most of which are in low to moderate income communities and navigating which uh, is in their best interest is quite complicated. And um, so TA is a big issue. And while the city of Chicago this week awarded um, Five million dollars in five thousand dollar grants uh, to one thousand uh, small businesses, micro businesses in the city of Chicago. Those one thousand that is out of five thousand applications, and I will tell you, uh, being one of the grant administrators for the city, and having reviewed close to five hundred applications, the biggest gap we had is, and it was a pretty simple process, was that many of the business owners uh, didn't understand why the uh, provider of the grant needed certain information. And something as simple as you have to complete the W-9, it was one of the requirements, and you have to sign the W-9, probably um, negated uh, without follow-up would have negated about a thousand of those 5,000 um, applicants. So uh, TA, as well as grant money, is a continues to be the biggest gap that's out there right now. So that's Thank what I wanted so to much, share Amelia. with all of you. That's, that's incredible. And Amelia, welcome back, as I said to you earlier. Thank you so much. I uh, have a little bit more time, and I see when ComEd asks for time, Comment gets its time. Ed, sitter. <laughs> Thank you, Howard. Can you hear me okay? Yes, and I'm, I'm glad you're well. Yes, I am well. I uh, hope everyone else is as well. So just let me briefly update on a couple of items. Some people may be aware of this, but um, back when this got started and until June 1st, we have, um, we're not doing any cuts for non-payment for customers. We're also not assessing any late fees for customers that, that may get extended beyond June 1st. I, I haven't heard yet, but I uh, just want to make people aware of that. Thirdly, um, this is a time, you know, not only with ComEd and other utility workers, but all kinds of you know, people that would look to do nasty things uh, when it comes to scams. So I just want to remind people to be on the lookout for things like that. Uh, ComEd never calls and asks for payment or asks for um, your account number or anything like that. And then lastly, um, we do have uh, some small grants that we've been providing to some non-for-profits that have been maybe hard hit particularly by this that are involved in sort of community development. And we've helped a few small businesses sort of on a case-by-case -case basis. So if anybody is aware of a situation, um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you don't have my contact info, but you can get it from Howard or Irene. And that's all, pending any questions. Thanks. Thank you so much, Ed. I uh, skipped over Sharon because it scrolled up. And Sharon, I apologize. It'll be Sharon, then Manny, and then we conclude this segment. So, Sharon. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Just uh, good morning. Three things. Um, you might have read that uh, there's a bill that has was introduced uh, uh, in Congress. That includes $100 billion in emergency rental assistance, um, as well as other housing-related funding. So that's something that we've been advocating with, and um, Enterprise and others on, on the phone probably have been doing a lot of federal-level advocacy. Uh, similarly, on a state level, we've been in contact with the governor's office and relevant departments regarding funding for um, homeless and emergency service agencies, um, as well as how to deal with... Um, so, so maintaining home ownership, um, ensuring that people um, can can stay 
in their homes, regardless of whether they're renting or have a mortgage. And so we're trying to figure out resources um, for some sort of hardest hit fund redux. Um, if some of you were around and working on housing issues in um, the Great Recession, that might uh, be familiar to you. Um, we've also been doing a lot of work uh, convening and getting information from direct service agencies around the state around what they're seeing, um, including uh, homeless service providers, um, as well as housing counseling agencies. So we've been surveying them regularly and providing, um, and I'm happy to provide all of this information uh, to Irene or whoever has questions about it um, and wants to see some of the data behind what we're what we're seeing, but this helps to inform our state and federal level advocacy, um, as well as our trainings. Um, and just in terms of, um, interestingly, for housing counseling, um, they have seen. I think the last um, survey was some about maybe a three hundred percent increase in calls from uh, renters and homeowners concerned about making their rent or their mortgage, um, and that was just in the last few weeks. Um, we also did a training on how to provide virtual housing counseling. And just as an example of the need, um, we, uh, we opened that up and within 90 minutes, we uh, reached our 150 person capacity. So we're going to obviously have another one of those trainings as well. So that's kind of just a very high level, um, some of the things that we've been working on, but on the, the housing front, affordable housing and homeless front, it's obviously, as you can imagine, quite busy. Um, so if anyone has any questions, um, and Andy, if you want to um, have any uh, particular uh, updates around the federal uh, bill that was just introduced, uh, let me know. Thank you, Sharon, so much. I cannot tell you how proud I am to have such a great uh, group of members and on so many different levels working in a new way in the new world. We have a couple more comments coming from, uh, these will be the last two, final call, Manny, followed by Simone Wheel. So Alderman. Uh, Chairman, thank you so much. Um, just wanted to, to thank, uh, you know, the uh, the Bureau and yourself and everyone else who um, is working with so many members of the small business um, community. Uh, obviously, what we're dealing with is, is an unprecedented event. Um, just wanted to share a perspective uh, as an SBA lender. We did not uh, participate in the PPP program just because, frankly, it, it was outside of our ability uh, and expertise. However, we've been very involved in providing technical assistance around processes and application um, um, frame processes and, and helping small businesses access the PPP loan and also collaborating uh, with other organizations. Um, I just want to reinforce and again just remind people that uh, as we uh, begin to reopen our economy um, that we're going to have to be thinking about what kinds of incentives we can provide to the market to get us going and that the Small Business Administration has other lending products beyond the PPP loan that can be helpful. Um, these are low interest rate, long-term fixed rate products that can be helpful. The 504 program is one of them. But I also do believe, uh, Chairman, that we have an opportunity with this committee, and I do want to, again, commend the staff, uh, the Bureau, uh, for the planning that they've already been developing along with the President and her leadership. But I do believe that you know we have to continue to build on, on a framework that is focused on how we uh, not only reopen our economy, but what that recovery uh, looks like for the next, frankly, year to two years, uh, given the impact that the shutdown has had uh, on our economy. And that um, if, you know, if, if frankly, we don't create uh, this kind of a framework or plan, I think that the recovery will be a much more slow, will be much slower and much more painful. Uh, resulting in in more job losses and decreased revenue. So I think we have an opportunity to create a framework, again, based on incentives, how we can accelerate that recovery um, and would, would love to be a part of that uh, effort. I love that idea, and perhaps it could be discussed in our planning committee, subcommittee at some point, Manny, that we should be looking, I think, already at the 
way out, and it will undoubtedly require all the skills that we have. Thank you so much. Simone? Oh, thank you, Howard. Sorry, I was having a, a challenge unmuting myself. Um, just wanted to uh, let some folks know, in case you're not on our uh, the CMAP mailing list, that we are uh, right now, uh, as the Transportation Planning Agency, trying to provide some data to understand uh, the immediate uh, impacts on our transportation system. Um, using some uh, cell phone data, we've found that while uh, communities throughout the region have seen a decline in, in travel, our lower income and minority communities are still having to travel a good bit more than, than higher income and uh, more Caucasian communities. So we'll continue to monitor that as we try to understand the disproportionate impacts to um, our region's residents. Um, we're also finding that transit is continuing to provide an essential service. Uh, both for essential workers to travel as well as for folks who have limited mobility options. We're thinking about um, how this crisis is going to impact uh, particularly municipalities going forward. And so we uh, looked at the uh, primary, uh, the mix kind of of uh, revenue reliance throughout the region. Some municipalities rely much more on sales tax while others rely more on property tax and they'll be hit by this crisis in different ways and over a, a different time span. So just trying to um, provide some more context for our policymakers as they think about recovery moving forward. We, uh, through our local technical assistance program, have uh, many deep connections to communities throughout the region, and we're working with Cook County and, and others to actually um, pretty soon here reach out to municipalities to understand uh, what their current response looks like as well as what they're thinking about for the future, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, wrap that up into some higher level findings. But um, our, our staff has been talking with Sochi and, and others about that. Um, we're also talking with the uh, county, the seven county board chairs about the need for coordinated uh, reopening and, and recovery efforts and um, it just underscoring the oh. interconnectedness of our, our economy. So those just quick updates, but I'd be happy to provide any information um, that we've been producing so far. Thank you so much, Simone. It uh, is again, you know, just an amazing group of individuals. I think we didn't uh, seat you as members for this time, but you are so suited, all of you who've spoken, all of you who haven't taken an opportunity to update us. I want to thank everyone. Uh, right now we're going to do uh, a bureau update. Sochi Flores, our bureau chief. Are you online? Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay, perfect. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, and it was really energizing to hear all the great work that our EDEC members have been doing during this recovery phase. We realize that it's such a critical time, and it's so important that we leverage one another's resources and expertise in order to be most impactful. Um, I, I do want to take a minute to thank all the EDEC members that have been really coordinating with us, contacting our team um, in both our initial rapid response phase of our work and now as we pivot into our long-term equitable um, economic recovery planning phase. Um, as both Howard and Manny mentioned, we do have a great team within EDEC and our internal folks have been assessing various initiatives that we are looking to undertake with the help of um, CCA and the Boston Consulting Group. And we are now getting into the phase where we're going to be bringing together our EDAC members to also assess those initiatives with your input and really dig into it and, and determine how we can deploy some of these initiatives um, utilizing data, but also being impactful with the resources we have. We realize that across all government sectors, um, resources are going to be very tight. So we need to ensure that the initiatives that we do launch um, will really assist during this recovery phase 
but also that we find the right partners so that we can be impactful in with those programs. So um, you will be hearing from our our internal folks, Dom and Susan and Carl and Irene, as they start developing um, these working groups to dig into some of these initiatives. So stay tuned for more information on, on those long-term recovery planning um, meetings. But in our last meeting, um, I know that the president and I spoke a bit about the launching of our Cook County Community Recovery Initiative, and it really has been um, quite an undertaking to roll this out in such a short period of time. But the technical assistance component um, of our initiative has been extremely successful so far. Um, it really has been an all hands on deck, working with many partners and CDFIs um, to provide that one-on-one -on -one hand holding technical assistance that small businesses need. Um, we've received thousands of inquiries about our loan program, but in addition to that, we've received so many individuals that are contacting us and our partners to just get some of their basic questions answered. So um, I do want to give a huge thanks to Emilia from WBDC and um, and Christy with SMMA and the Southland SBDC and also Commissioner Gaynor's team for jumping jumping in this past week and helping us really um, start making some calls to these small businesses that are contacting us. Um, it's overwhelming how many businesses are are reaching out and asking for some basic help. They just need some guidance. And we're fortunate that we have a robust group of partners that um, that pick up our calls and, and are always asking us, what else can we do? How can we assist? We realize that this is this is going to require a coordinated effort, but thank, thanks to all of you guys for helping us, especially this past week as we were making one-on-one um, -on -one calls with these businesses and trying to help them navigate through this difficult process. So helping them navigate through this um, has been one of the key activities that we have been focused on um, through our educational webinars. We've hosted a series of these, um, I think it was five webinars, that have had over 7,000 participants in these webinars. So they've been really successful. Um, we have been focused on really going through the application process for the Paycheck Protection Program and helping small businesses, gig workers, and, non and nonprofits um, address general troubleshooting questions with regards to PPP. So this has been this has been our main focus. Obviously, many of our organizations and our partners in this committee has also been focused on trying to get our small businesses to access this funding. We all know that the first round of PPP uh, made it very difficult for our sec for our very small businesses to access that that fund. Um, but through our coordinated efforts, I know that the second round we have had a much better success rate. We are going to be tracking um, the impact of these webinars. Um, one of our partners has already provided some preliminary numbers, and I know the American Business Immigration Coalition, they're, they're actively tracking some of the businesses that they're providing one-on-one -on -one assistance, and they've already assisted over 200 businesses and that's impacted over 5,000 employees with loan values of over $3 million. So that's, that's amazing what we were able to quickly stand up through these partners and providing this one-on-one -on -one assistance. Um, but that's just one of our partners and we're working closely with several entities to guide small businesses and get them to the resources that are needed. Um, in in addition to providing these webinars, one of the things that we are focused on um, specifically for our, our targeting our uh, most vulnerable small businesses, we realize that that one-on-one -on -one technical assistance is needed, but um, 
We also know that those materials need to be provided in various languages because it is difficult enough for a small business to navigate through um, all these different programs and information that's being provided. For our small businesses that have language barriers, it, it is even more cumbersome. So we did provide one of our webinars in Spanish that that was very successful. We have also translated our webinars to Mandarin and Hindi, and we will soon also have it available in Polish. They are available on our website, and we constantly see people downloading them. We refer small businesses to these webinars because it provides some of the basic information that many of these businesses want to know. Um, so I encourage you to go to our website and check out that information. Within our Bureau, we're very fortunate that we have a robust team that serve on the President's Racial Equity Leadership Council, and they are keeping us focused on ensuring that we provide access to, to this information and to resources to, um, to all sorts of communities. So they're working very closely with our communications team and with our departments to ensure that information that we do have available is translated and accessible to all sorts of communities. Um, I know that, that we have been focused on PPP and we will continue to work with our partners to get our business, the small businesses access to that information and that funding, but we are, um, are close to launching our, in, our own loan program. We wanted to initially focus our efforts on the huge pot of federal funding that has been made available. So we had been focused on PPP, but we are getting very close to launching our loan program with um, CCLF, our program administrator, and we will have some CDFIs and other entities that will be um, that will be um, also providing those loans. Those loans will be for small businesses specific, specifically within suburban Cook County. And we will, we will be finally in an FAQ list that I'll ask um, our economic development team to distribute to, to our committee so that you are all aware of the details of this loan program. Um, and we will also inform you as soon as it gets launched later this month. So that's sort of um, a few of the things that we have been working on. But like I said, we are pivoting to our long-term equitable economic recovery planning efforts now. And your engagement in those efforts is critical. So I appreciate your continued support and, us, and working closely with us as we identify and pr prioritize some initiatives that can be most impactful during this recovery phase. So thank you so much. And with that, Howard, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you so much, Soshi, for that complete, uh, I think, review, although I bet there's even more that's going on. And I want to just take a moment to focus on a word that you said several times, and that's equity. The, uh, back a year ago in September, uh, President Preckwinkle gave a speech at the, at the city club about equity, and it had a number of legs to attack equity issues. This mess that we're in has touched all of our lives, all members of VDAC, and our relatives, people we know, local businesses we've supported, and even large corporations that call Chicago area home. I feel that the inequities have never been laid more bare than when you look at any city, large one, for example, Detroit, reporting that 36% of the children have not, and this is two weeks ago, yet logged in to an online class, that we look at the health statistics of black and brown communities as impacted by COVID. This is so much uh, a mess right out in the open. And I wanna thank everyone who is attacking these inequities from various perspectives, especially on the economic development front. 
all of the members are greatly at work <laughs> doing the kinds of things that we all have specialized in, but no, I don't think any of us ever knew we trained for this. And I want to uh, tell people that it's, it's a horrible mess, as we all know, and I'm glad that we continue to focus on not just what we do in the short term, but looking at sustainable solutions through at least our focuses on economic development and other areas where there's been inequity. I want to thank everyone for calling in. Uh, we will be meeting on June 10th next. Uh, uh, we want to return, I believe, to regular order at some point, and that may not be uh, you know, in person quite as frequently, but what we're going to try to do is keep an eye out on what the rules are, try to look at this, how this worked, and I'd like for people to give feedback to the Bureau and to me directly through email. Let me know if this works for you. If you didn't get a chance to talk, I apologize. We're a large group, but we'll figure out a format to make it possible. I want to thank everybody. Um, I need a motion to adjourn unless anyone else has a comment. Then please give me a motion to adjourn and stay this well. Is, this is Pam, motion, for motion to adjourn. William Thank Town, you, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nobody, nobody's Aye. going to oppose this one. <laughs> Thank you all so much for, for thank you, uh, attending this meeting. Oh, thank all you right, so take much. Care. All thank you, Soshi. Bye bye, everyone. Stay well. Stay safe. Bye.